this video, we are going to talk about the biological and environmental causes of developmental disabilities. Now, let's start with the basic concepts of human reproduction. Heredity is the mechanism for the transmission of human characteristics from one generation to the next. Each person carries a genetic code or genome, a complete set of coded instructions for making and maintaining an organism. The genome is inherited from both parents. The genome is described as the blueprint or book of human life. It carries and determines all the characteristics of a person yet to be born. The genome is located within each of 100 trillion cells in the human body. The nucleus inside the cell contains a complete set of the body's genome that is twisted into 46 packets of thread-like microscopic structures called chromosomes. The chromosomes come in 23 pairs. Each pair is composed of one chromosome from the male and the female parents, respectively. Each set has 22 single chromosomes called autosomes that carry the physical, mental, and personality characteristics. Meanwhile, the 23rd pair, the XY chromosomes, determines the sex of the organism. A normal female will have a pair of XX chromosomes, while a normal male will have an XY pair of chromosomes. Inside the chromosome is the long thread-like molecule and genetic substance called the deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. The DNA is a complex molecule that contains the genome. The DNA molecule consists of two strands of twisted ladder-shaped structure called the double helix that wrap around each other. The double helix was discovered in 1953 by American biochemist James Watson and the British biophysicist Francis Crick. The discovery of the double helix launched an era of molecular genetics. The genetic code can be read in the rung of the ladder. The code is spelled out by four chemicals or nucleotide bases, namely adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine pairs with thymine while guanine pairs with cytosine to form the rungs of the ladder. There are 3 billion chemical pairs in the DNA that contain the human genetic code. Each DNA molecule contains many genes. The basic physical and functional units of hereditary information. A gene is a specific sequence of the four nucleotide bases whose sequences carry the information for constructing proteins. Proteins provide the structural components of the cells, tissues, and enzyme for essential biochemical reactions. Genes act as a blueprint for cells to reproduce themselves and manufacture the proteins that maintain life. Scientists estimate that there are 80,000 to 140,000 or so genes that largely determine every physical characteristic in the human body. Now, let's talk about some principles of genetic determination. Genetic determination is a complex affair. Much is unknown about the way genes work. But a number of genetic principles have been discovered. Among them, the principles of dominant recessive genes, sex-linked genes, polygenically inherited characteristics, reaction range, and canalization. In dominant recessive genes principle, if one gene of the pair is dominant and one is recessive, the dominant gene exerts its effect, overriding the potential influence of the recessive gene. For example, 
brown eyes, far-sightedness, and dimples are common dominant genes that ruled over blue eyes, nearsightedness, and freckles. to the basic terms in human reproduction. Gametes are the human reproduction cells which are created in the reproductive organs. The ovaries of the female produce the ovum or egg cells while the testicles or testes of the male produce the spermatozoa or sperm cells. Meiosis is the process of cell division in which each pair of chromosomes in cells separates, with one member of each pair going into each gamete or daughter cells. Thus, each gamete, the ovum and the sperm, has 23 unpaired chromosomes. The ovum is only about one-fourth the size of a period but it is the largest cell in the human body. When a female is born, she already has about 400,000 immature ova in her two ovaries. Each ovum is contained in its own small sac or follicle. After a female matures sexually and until menopause, ovulation takes place once every 28 days, when a mature follicle in one of her ovaries ruptures and expels its ovum. The ovum is about 90,000 times as large as the sperm cell. Thousands of sperm cells must combine to break down the ovum's membrane barrier to allow even a single sperm cell to penetrate it. In contrast to the ovum, the sperm, which is tadpole-like and only one six hundredth inch from head to tail, is one of the smallest cells in the body. Furthermore, sperms are more much numerous, several millions and more active than the ova. A mature male testicle normally produces several hundred million sperms a day, which are ejaculated in the semen at sexual climax. An estimated 20 million sperms must enter a woman's ovary at one time 
to make fertilization likely. The fertilization of a female ovum by a male sperm starts the process of human reproduction. Fertilization results in the formation of a single cell called the zygote. In the zygote, two sets of 23 unpaired chromosomes, one set each from the male and the female, combine to form one set of paired chromosomes. In this manner, each parent contributes 50% or half of the zygote's genetic code or genome. Now, let's proceed to the course of prenatal development. Development in utero covers about 38 weeks or 280 days or 9 months of gestation or growth in the mother's womb. Prenatal development is divided into three phases. The first one is the germinal phase. This is the initial stage of prenatal development covers the first two weeks after fertilization. The three significant developments during this phase are the creation of the zygote, continuous cell division slash cell, and tissue differentiation and implantation or attachment of the zygote to the uterine wall. Let's talk about creation of the zygote. Ovulation occurs once every 28 days or so. As an ovum out of hundreds of ova matures, and the single ripe ovum bursts from its follicle. The ovum is drawn into the fallopian tube during the 9th to the 16th day of the menstrual cycle, which is the fertile period. Ovulation sends a chemical signal to unleash a carefully toned sequence of biochemical substances. One chemical substance dissolves the jelly-like veil surrounding the ovum. Another chemical substance softens the ovum's tough outer cell. Millions of sperms deposited by the male race to penetrate the ovum's shell. Only one strong and healthy sperm succeeds. Once it enters the ovum, an electric charge fires across the membrane and a signal causes the ovum to close, blocking the entry of other sperms. In fertilization, it takes place with the union of the genetic materials in the ovum and sperm cells. The process occurs in the upper third of the fallopian tube within 18 to 24 hours after sexual intercourse. When fertilization does not take place, the womb whips and the menstrual cycle continues the following month. When an ovum is fertilized, the menstrual cycle ceases. The first sign of pregnancy is amonorrhea or the cessation of menses. The first menses is called menarche. The final cessation of menses is called menopause, while excessive, sometimes painful menses is called menorrhagia. The zygote is a new cell which results from the transmission of the genetic materials 24 to 30 hours after fertilization. The zygote weighs about 120 millionth of an ounce. This is 1 16th of a pound or 2.2 pounds equals 1 kilo. The zygote carries the human genetic code or genome. The instruction that orchestrates one's physical and mental traits and social biological tendencies and the new person's entire lifelong blueprint of characteristics. In continuous cell division, in cell tissue differentiation, chemical reactions occur that cause the zygote to divide repeatedly and generate new cells and tissues of different types. 
in cell division, it occurs very rapidly in the first few days and progresses with considerable speed. The zygote divided into two cells after 36 hours, four cells after 48 hours. In three days, there is a small compact ball of 16 to 32 cells. In four days, a hollow ball has 64 to 128 cells. By approximately one week, the zygote has divided into about 150 cells. Cell differentiation continues as the inner and outer layers of the organism are formed. The inner layer of cells which develops in the embryo later on is called blastocyst. The outer layer of cells that provides nutrition and support for the embryo is called thropoblast. Implantation or attachment of the zygote to the uterine wall. Implantation starts on the 6th to the 7th day when the blastocyst starts to attach itself to the uterine wall. Two weeks after, from the 11th to the 15th day, the blastocyst invades or fully attaches itself into the uterine wall and becomes implanted in it. Now, what can go wrong during the germinal phase? Abnormalities in the genes and chromosomes can occur. Both the speed of cell division and the process of cell differentiation expose the zygote to trauma. Genetic disorders can be transmitted such as the dominant and recessive diseases like Tay-Sachs disease, Galactosemia, phenylketonuria, or PKU, genetic mutation. Also, sex link inheritances such as Lesh Nihan syndrome, Fragile X syndrome. Also, polygenic inheritances. Chromosomal deviations, the most common of which is Down syndrome. Other sex chromosomal anomalies like Klein-Falter syndrome, Turner syndrome, and cranial or skull malformations such as anencephaly or absence of major portions of the brain, microcephaly, and hydrocephaly. Biological causes of developmental disabilities are traceable to congenital or inherited genetic materials, as well as prenatal factors associated with teratogens or toxic substances, maternal disorders, substance exposure, or too much ingestion of alcohol and drugs, and too much smoking. The genetic disorders are discussed in the chapter on mental retardation. The second phase of human development is the embryonic phase. It occurs from the end of the germinal phase to the second month of pregnancy. The mass of cells is now called the embryo. The three main processes during this phase are intensification of cell differentiation, development of the support systems for continued cell development and organogenesis or the appearance of the different organs of the body. Now, in intensification of cell differentiation, during implantation, the mass of cells form three layers from which every part of the human body will develop. First is what you call the ectoderm. It is the outermost layer of cells that will develop into the surface body parts, such as the outer skin or the epidermis, including the cutaneous glands, the hair, nails, and lens of the eye. Second is the mesoderm. 
It is the middle layer that will develop into the body parts surrounding the internal areas such as the muscles, cartilage, bone, blood, bone ureter, gonads, genital ducts, suprarenal cortex, and the joint cavities. Third is the endoderm. It is the inner layer of cells that will develop into the epithelium of the pharynx, thumb, auditory tube, tonsils, thyroid, larynx, trachea, lungs, digestive tube, bladder, vagina, and urethra. In the development of the life support system, as the embryo's three layers of cells develop, the life support system developed from the embryo for the transfer of substances from the mother to the zygote and vice versa. Very small molecules of oxygen, water, salt, and food from the mother's blood are transferred to the embryo. Carbon dioxide and digestive waste from the embryo's blood are transferred to the mother's blood. The placenta is a disc-shaped mass of tissues in which small blood vessels from the mother intertwine. The umbilical cord contains two arteries and one vein that connects the embryo to the placenta. The amnion or amniotic fluid is a bag of water that contains clear fluid where the embryo floats. The amnion provides an environment that is temperature and humidity controlled and shock proof. The amnion comes from the fetal urine that the kidney of the fetus produces at approximately the 16th week until the ninth month or the end of pregnancy. Organogenesis is the process of organ formation and the appearance of body organs during the first two months. By the third week, the neural tube forms and eventually becomes the spinal cord. At the same time, the eye buds begin to appear. By the 24th day, the cells for the heart begin to differentiate. The fourth week is marked by the first appearances of the orogenital systems. The arm and leg buds appear. The four chambers of the heart take shape and blood vessels surface. On the fifth to the eighth week, the arms and legs differentiate further. The face starts to form, but it is not very recognizable. The intestinal tract develops and the facial structures fuse. The embryo weights about 1 30th of an ounce. Now, what can go wrong during the embryonic phase? The cells divide very rapidly during organogenesis. The organs and systems that are developing are especially vulnerable to environmental changes. Induced abortion in case of unwanted pregnancy can disturb normal processes of organogenesis. Chromosomal abnormalities can cause spontaneous abortion mostly in the second or third month. During specific periods, for example, if the central nervous system is the primary system that is developing, the cells that constitute the central nervous system, the brain, and the spinal cord divide more rapidly than the other organs. At this time, the central nervous system is most vulnerable to trauma. Ingestion of dermatogens or toxic agents from alcohol, drugs, and nicotine, artificial food, 
additives, stress, and accidents can cause trauma and affect the development that is taking place. Physical abnormalities can result as well. At birth, there are infants born with extra or missing limbs and fingers, ears and other body parts, a tail-like protrusion, heart or brain, digestive or respiratory organs outside the body. Facial development and body shapes can be affected by what scientists describe as accidents in cell development. Some clustered of cells that are meant to develop into certain organs in parts of the body failed to follow the precise genetic instruction and appeared at birth as inhuman. With the face, for example, resembling that of a frog or other animals, statues, or even pictures, people tend to attribute such occurrences to maternal impressions. But it is clear that the scientific explanation goes back to disturbances in development during pregnancy. The third phase is what you call the fetal phase. It covers seven months that last from the third to the ninth month of pregnancy on the average. The length and weight of the fetus mentioned below are for average Caucasian babies. Asians are generally shorter and lighter. Number one, at three months, the fetus is about three inches long and weighs about one ounce. It is active, moves its arms, legs, and head, opens and closes its mouth. The face, forehead, eyelids, nose, chin, upper, and lower arms are distinguishable. Genitals can be identified as male or female. At four months, the fetus is five and a half inches long, weighing about four ounces. Growth sport occurs in the body's lower parts. Prenatal reflexes are stronger. Arms and leg movements can be felt by the mother. Number three, at five months, the fetus is 10 to 12 inches long and weighs one half to one pound or almost half a kilo. Structures of the skin, two nails and fingernails have formed. The fetus is more active and shows preference for a particular position in the womb. Number four, at six months, the fetus is 14 inches long and has gained one half to one pound. The eyelids and eyes are completely formed. A thin layer of hair covers the head. Grasping reflex is present. Irregular breathing occurs. At seven months, the fetus is almost 17 inches long has gained one pound and weighs about three pounds. Number six, during the eighth and nine months, the fetus continues to grow longer to about 20 inches and gains about four pounds. Fatty tissue develops and the functioning of the organ systems steps up. The fetus normally weighs six to eight pounds shortly before birth. Now, what can go wrong during the fetal phase? The same effects of teratogens can occur and disturb normal development. The fetus continues to be vulnerable to trauma that can result to occurrence of disabilities, deliberate termination of pregnancy or abortion for whatever reasons, poor health, rape, incest, out-of-wedlock relations, if unsuccessful, can lead to disabilities. An adequate birth weight due malnutrition or early birth places the infant at developmental risk. The last phase of human development is birth of the infant. After full gestation for 38 weeks, the fetus leaves the intrauterine environment of the mother's womb and begins life in the outside world. There are changes in the mother's body that start around the fourth month or mid-pregnancy. 
These changes are necessary so that the natural birth process can occur normally. Some of the changes are rearrangement of the muscle structure of the uterus to facilitate fetal expulsion or to permit the normal passage of the fetus through the birth canal. Shortly before birth and during the onset of labor, which lasts for 7 to 12 hours on the average, the upper part of cervical area undergoes expansion. By the time the fetus is passing through the birth canal, the muscle structure of the cervix has loosened and expanded. The process is called effacement that enables the fetus to be expelled. The normal and desirable position of the fetus when labor begins is with the head towards the cervix. The, this position occurs in almost 80% of all childbirth. As the fetus begins to move downward into the birth canal, the pelvic girdle or the bony hip structure stretches more. The pressure of the pelvic girdle also molds the head of the fetus. This is the reason why newborn babies have strangely shaped heads. After a few days, the head returns to its natural shape. All the movements during birth are generated by the muscle contraction of the uterus called labor. While the fetus is moving downward, it turns clockwise from the effect of labor. A few minutes after the infant is delivered, the placenta is expelled. The respiratory tract is immediately cleared of the remaining amniotic fluid and mucus. The doctor provides the stimulation for the infant to begin to breathe, usually by gently patting the buttocks. The infant's first cry expands the lungs with the air for the first time and starts the process of respiration. Now, what can go wrong during the birth process? The birth process represents another important time when potential risk to fetus or infant are high. The birth process is very complex and at times may not proceed smoothly. Difficulties can arise that result to developmental disabilities. First is physical trauma or mechanical injury during birth may injure or damage the brain and impair intellectual functioning. In precipitous birth, where labor is short, Less than two hours, skull molding that should be slow and smooth may affect and injure the brain. In breech birth, where the buttocks instead of the head presents itself first, poses substantial danger because the head reaches the pelvic girdle during the later stages of labor when there is more pressure exerting on it. The abnormal pressure generated in breech birth rapidly compresses the still, soft skull which crushes portions of the brain. Also, the rapid pressure and shifting of cranial bones can damage the circulatory system after the brain and lead to hemorrhage in skull and brain damage. Usually, a fetus in breech position is delivered by cesarean section. Abdominal surgery is done and the fetus is extracted from the uterine wall. In the transferred position where the fetus lies ac across the birth canal, the same problems in which birth are present. Number two, anoxia or asphyxia occurs in breech delivery and deprives the infant of adequate supply of oxygen for a period long enough to damage the brain. The infant must depend entirely on the umbilical cord as a source of oxygen until birth is completed. However, the breech position makes the umbilical cord too short to remain attached while the head is being expelled. The placenta can become partially or completely detached while the head is still inside the birth canal. This eliminates oxygen supply and severe brain injury can happen.